Three weeks ago, I published a video titled, Don't You Dare Buy Gold Now. The blowback from some of you guys was swift and harsh. Now that some time has passed, let's see how well that video has aged. Let's get into it. The premise of that video was that the Federal Reserve has so much power and so much control over the market that not even conflict in the Middle East could overpower its influence. Based on the data, we could see that the flight to safety in gold was weak, which means it wasn't a sure thing to pile into gold at that time. Although some viewers appreciated my different point of view, others were not as open-minded. Oh wow, gold is up 1% today. Meaning, I must be completely wrong because gold is up. And if it's up 1% today, that must mean it will keep going up, so let's chase prices higher. Another commented, wrong. Should have waited to post such nonsense. That was October 18th. Looking at this chart, we see that the October 18 gold price was $1,947 an ounce. But that's the close price. We have to go back to the previous day, the 17th, to get the price when the video was published. There we have $1,823. And today, we're sitting at a gold price of $1,937. Essentially, the same price. Fed Chairman Powell indicated that the Fed has more work to do to get inflation down. His words, If it becomes appropriate to tighten policy further, we will not hesitate to do so. We will continue to move carefully, however, allowing us to address both the risk of being misled by a few good months of data and the risk of over-tightening. That means either another hike in January or February, or higher rates for longer, even longer than a lot of us were thinking. I've been thinking Q3 of 2024 is when the Fed starts easing, but I may be wrong about that. Whatever the case, the Fed is keeping a lid on gold prices. There could be lower prices ahead. However, strong central bank buying remains a supportive factor. That's why I'm not buying gold now, just like I wasn't buying three weeks ago. Spot gold price is essentially in the same place it was three weeks ago. I didn't miss out on anything. So what's going on here? Why do I keep getting this right while so many get it wrong? Remember, my position was called nonsense in the comments. There's another influence out there that is very powerful, and that is the rise of alarmism. Alarmism is the use of exaggerated or sensationalized language to promote a particular point of view. It's often used to scare people into taking action, even if the threat is not real or is overblown. Alarmism can be found in all walks of life, but it's particularly prevalent in social media and in political discourse. It's also used by special interest groups to promote their own agendas. The climate crazies think we're all going to die, so it's necessary to regulate the minutia of our daily lives. From electric vehicles, to bans on gas appliances and new homes, to bans on gas-powered lawn and garden equipment, electrifying everything is the only way to save us, they say. Another topic that is often hijacked by alarmists is central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. CBDC alarmists claim that CBDCs are a threat to our privacy and financial security. The only way to protect yourself is to get all of your money out of the bank and buy gold now, they say. Alarmism makes us believe that $300 silver and $10,000 gold are their true prices. And since silver is at $23, not $300, then the price must be manipulated. So there we have the first reason I sound different. By turning off the alarmist, I'm better able to use reason, historical evidence, and current market data to base investing decisions on. Once we start listening to the true nonsense of alarmism, we make room for emotion to influence our decisions, be it fear or greed. Recently, another channel, Silver Seeker, had an interview with the owner of Vermilion Enterprises, an LCS in Florida. He had a story about an older couple coming into a shop earlier this year with $300,000 to buy gold. The guy was something like 80 plus years old and clearly upset. His wife was crying, but he was convinced that he had to put all of his life savings into gold because of this CBDC thing. Thankfully, the LCS owner talked him off the ledge and didn't take his money like a lot of other coin shops and especially pawn shops would have done. That guy was nearly a victim of alarmism. That's why I keep talking about this subject. If you could just hit that like button, 
It'll tell YouTube to push this video out to more people, people who could benefit from rational, clear thinking, and maybe we could talk a few others off the ledge likewise. Look, I love gold, and I want to have more. But stacking is a measured activity. You put in what you can afford to put in gradually over time, year after year. Many stackers like to dollar cost average rather than time the market. Don't worry about price so much, just be regular about stacking. That's a great strategy for new stackers to get started, as well as for other stackers to keep on stacking. Here's the latest gold price index that we produce. To the right, recent declines in gold prices resulted in sales volume going up. Prices come down, sales go up. The pattern repeats itself again and again. That's all I have for you today. Stay safe out there and we'll see you next time.